517th Contact, Saturday, the 19th of March, 2011. Extract from the 517th Contact published in Figu Special Bulletin No. 61, May 2011. Billy says but if it is possible, then I still do have one or two questions. Pata says naturally. Billy says it is because of the sea quake Sunmi catastrophe in Japan. Around 6.45 am, Central European time, on Friday, the 11th of March, a massive earthquake, with a strength of 9.0 on the Richter scale, occurred off the Japanese coast. The earthquake triggered an enormous Sunmi which rolled across the coast of the main island of Inshu. The worst affected our three prefectures in the northeast of the country Fukushima, Iwate, Miyagi on a 600 km coastline. In Fukushima, a nuclear power plant with six reactors has been seriously affected. In regard to that, it is said that a super worst possible case scenario is possible. But I think that this has already happened, and now an ultra super worst possible case scenario threatens. And it is also the case that the emerging radiation and radioactive water from the reactors will not just pollute large parts of the district, rather perhaps entire tracts of land, and the sea, and that the emerging radioactive particles will also be driven by the wind around the world, thus also to Europe. Pata says your assumption is right that the so-called super worst possible case scenario has already occurred, being that very dangerous and extensive radiation is being emitted from reactor 3, in which the dangerous plutonium is exposed, and which not only spreads over wide regions, rather also spreads out into the sea and seriously contaminates the sea as well as fish and the other sea creatures, which has manifold deadly consequences. It is therefore a deliberate lie, from those in charge, that the disaster has not yet happened in the named form. And the occurrence of the now threatening, ultra super worst possible case scenario, as you call it, is only a question of time. The measures which are taken for the cooling of the reactors, and so forth, and which are meant to prevent everything, only correspond to useless acts of desperation. But also to bear in mind with this is that the water which is taken, in desperation, from the sea to use for cooling, on the other hand, involves great danger, because the sea water salt generates dangerous effects which impair the cooling process. And the radioactive particles, which are blown all over the place by the wind, actually spread around the earth. We have already been able to detect, two days ago, on March 17, 2011, Therefore last Thursday, such radioactive particles in the northern area of Europe as well as in Central Europe. Billy says and is Switzerland also affected by that? Patar says that is actually the case, whereby one can assume that the radioactive particles which have emerged up to this point in low amounts will manifest in increased quantity. Billy says that is to be feared. But that which interests me is how great is the possibility that is to say is it even possible, to decontaminate areas contaminated with radioactivity, by destroying the radiation? I especially think about contamination with plutonium. The technically most important isotope, an emitter of alpha particles, is plutonium-239, with a half-life of 24,110 years. Plutonium is a silver-white, non-noble, heavy metal, which is primarily artificially produced in nuclear reactors more precisely, breed reactors. In nature, it occurs only in very small quantities in uranium ores, where it originates from natural uranium. As a consequence of its high alpha particle radiating activity and its propensity for accumulating in the bones of human beings and other living organisms, Plutonium has the effect of making the entire body radioactive. It belongs to the most dangerous of known toxins. As a rule, the inhalation of plutonium dust evokes lung cancer, whereby, however, the effect of even a few micrograms can lead to fatal radiation poisoning. At least, those are the most important facts of which I am aware, aside from the half-lives of two further plutonium isotopes. Of course I am no nuclear physicist. 
Pata says that which you say is naturally correct. But, to your question, I can only explain that there is no possibility at all of eliminating ionizing radiation. Therefore, we also know of no effective method in this regard. Only the half-life period can be taken into consideration during which the radiation decreases by half. Billy says in 24,110 years, half the radioactive substance is present. After a further 24,110 years, there is, once again, half, and so forth. The effective half-life indicates the time after which the radioactivity of a radioactive substance in an organism is reduced by half. The radioactive decay and the excretion from the organism lead to the decrease. I have learned that plutonium is a radioactive chemical element from the actinid and trincheranic group. It is known as a whole range of mostly man-made unstable isotopes, being at least 15, whereby the longest living, plutonium-244, has a half-life of 82,600,300 years and plutonium-242 with a somewhat lesser longevity, has a half-life of 376,300 years. I found additional half-lives in the dictionary, as follows. Type half-life type thorium-219. Half-life 1.05 microseconds. Type nitrogen. Half-life 9.96 minutes. Type potassium. Half-life 12.36 hours. Type iodine 131. Half-life 8.02 days. Type strontium 90. Half-life 28.78 years. Type cesium 137. Half-life 37.17 years. Type radium 226. Half-life 1600 years. Type carbon. Half-life 5730 years. Type U234 uranium. Half-life 2.466105 x years. Type U235. Half-life 7.04 x108 years. Type U238. Half-life 4.47 x109 years. Pata says all that is also correct for which reason there is nothing further to explain. The end.